Hey, this is Andreas with nothingbuttablets.com. This time I'm going to show you another photo related app for the iPad. Or, or actually it for, uh, for the iPhone, but it also works on the iPad. Um, it's called Auto Stitch and it's a panorama maker app. Uh, the reason that it isn't on the iPad, I'm guessing, is that it doesn't have a camera. Uh, but as you know, if you have the camera connection kit, that's not a problem. So I just took some pictures right now using my digital SLR camera. Uh, I use that one because when you're making panoramas, it's very important to try to keep uh, or, or to use the same settings for all your pics. Otherwise, you're going to end up with... Um, uh, pictures that uh, have been adjusted depending on uh, light and all that sort of stuff so like I did right now I started off at one corner um, of the landscape and made my uh, way in a sort of like a 180 degree angle and in the process I passed by the sun so I was actually shooting directly towards the sun which means that if I had been using the auto mode on my camera uh, the pictures would have been very different from the ones that was not shot towards the sun so uh, I just imported the pictures right now um, I limited myself to 2.5 megapixels per image on the DSLR uh, the app can actually output up to 18 megapixels, which is quite good, I think. Um, to actually do that, you have to go into Options, select Advanced Resolution, and then set the maximum size to 18 megapixels. Uh, also, I set Blending to Best, that's basically just uh, how much time it uses to uh, put the images together to get the best result. Um, I'm going to go into last import, select all my photos, click stitch, and as you can see this is just a, a large version of the iPhone app. On the iPad you can run any iPhone app in either pixel doubling mode or just uh, the normal resolution. It doesn't really matter as much. Um, for apps like these because the final image isn't going to be affected anyways and you're not going to view it much on uh, or in the app so it's but but of course it's it looks better if you have a native iPad resolution so because it's basically doing uh, quite an advanced job with putting together all the pieces it does take a bit of time not a lot of time I think uh, if you've ever used panorama software before even on a fast computer it takes a bit of time because it has to line up all the shots and of course when you take the initial pictures in the first place you have to make sure that you overlap is each picture uh, with the last one so I think the standard is something like 30% uh, so you should always be able to see 30% of the last picture in the next picture. And this was just taken out my window and you can see over here is the sun. Um, you can see that you see some solar flare kind of effects right here that's because uh, I originally set the manual settings for my camera to uh, give a best result for this part of the picture then as I move across um, you can see the building sort of keeps the same lighting but as I move closer to the sun uh, the sky gets more and more washed out um, that's just something you have to deal with if you don't want to mess with um, taking multiple shots uh, and sort of editing them together but if I hadn't done it the way I did, um, this part would have gotten darker and darker as the camera would have automatically adjusted to having the sun pointing straight at it. So uh, I'm going to crop it now. Uh, let's see. I'm 
not sure if that's a part that's missing or whatever it is but I'm going to crop it out um, you can see that the lines over here are not completely straight and that's because when you take panorama, panorama pictures um, the perspective changes and so when you put it together yeah, you get a bit of distortion and so it can be a bit bulky that's why you should always crop before doing anything so let's see um, final image I use 2.5 me uh, megapixel uh, uh, photos from the DSLR and the resulting panorama is about 8 megapixels which is a lot less than the maximum um, resolution the app can handle but it's still more than enough for many uses and as you can see the building sort of bulges as you go past there and that's the issue I was talking about with distortion but let's move this turn this one over uh, okay I'm done with the import going to albums here you can see the that's not right I accidentally, accidentally touched the navigation bar at the bottom this is the final for the love of god this is the final photo uh, you, you can see that it's pretty good aside from the sky getting washed out by the sun um, so yeah that's basically auto stitch for the iPhone on the iPad and the real use of apps like this is that if you have a real camera um, you should go read Alan's last article if you haven't already he talks about uh, rear facing cameras on tablets and I think that it's much easier to have a compact camera on the side because then you can do stuff like this and even though this was pictures that were taken pretty fast and not at an optimal angle in regards to the sun uh, the result is much better than you would get using a camera phone first of all because there is no manual mode on a camera phone so that's it head over to nothing but tablets to read the article that this video belongs to and thank you for watching